Howdy y'all and welcome back to Country Fried Minis. I'm your host Cameron, the country boy in the big city, coming to you once again to talk about this Battletech Lance that I'm putting together and also to talk to y'all about accepting when our models are good enough. discussed in the previous episode, I myself am not the best sculptor nor painter in the world. It's real easy to get caught up looking at pictures of fantastic models and to try and hold ourselves to those standards that those painters put forward. That's not always necessary and it's good to remember that good enough is good enough. My intention today is to work with contrast paints. And for that, I've opted to use this Citadel Color Wraithbone Spray as recommended by the manufacturer to prime my models. After putting some on the models, let's give it just a little bit of time to go ahead and cure up. By giving the primer ample time to cure, we've given these models a nice creamy coat which will really enhance any adhesion for paint that we put on the models in later steps. This smooth and even coat will work especially well with contrast paints, which we're going to use as the base layer. That being said, contrast paints are notorious for wearing out brushes. In that regard, I think it's about time to retire this number two round by Princeton Art and Brush Company. It's served me really well over the last two years, but the tip is starting to get pretty frayed and worn out. Ironically, that makes this brush almost perfect for applying washes and contrast paints. Now I'll go ahead and start mixing up a custom contrast color to paint up these mechs. I'd like a nice light base tone today, so I've elected to mix up a custom contrast color using this here Valor Brown. The resulting color will be a lot lighter than the apparent color of this paint on account of the contrast medium turning this color into a nice translucent layer. Now that we've got a nice puddle of the contrast medium on the wet palette, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of the Baylor Brown and start mixing it up until it's a nice smooth even paint. Right now the color's still a little too dark, so I'm going to go back and add a little bit more medium to get a more transparent color. And once thoroughly mixed up, we'll go ahead and spread a little on the wet palette to judge the consistency of the paint. Perfect. Nice and thin. Now we're going to take our freshly made paint and slop it over every square inch of this model. As you can see, the thin consistency of this contrast mix is going to provide an all over tint rather than an opaque paint job over the mech. Since this paint is so thin, almost a wash in fact, it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Going as far as to deposit the darker colors in the crevices like shadows, while also leaving the raised edges closer to the wraith bone white. We're not worried about cleanliness at this stage, so we're just going to go ahead and slop it all over the model in a super heavy coat to get a uniform tint over the entirety of the chassis. We're not worried about pooling at this moment because there's no other color to mar with tide marks, and any overly opaque sections will be tamped down in the later steps. Rather, we're treating this step like a base coat, and we want some solid coverage over the entire mech to let the contrast paint do a lot of the work for us. <laughs> Digressing for a moment, I want to share just how difficult it is to maintain a focus with a fixed focus camera. That's why in today's episode you can see I'm working with a second camera which actually has an autofocus function. Of course, this too has its disadvantages, so I'll go ahead and use both cameras to get a nice variety of shots going forward. Getting back on track, we're going to go and apply the same steps to every single model in this lance. After all, today's video isn't about painting one model, but rather a full lance of four mechs. So as we finish the steps with one mech, we'll go ahead and take it off the paint handle and apply the next one and go on down the line. In fact, the entirety of this project will be doing a step, taking the model off, and rinsing and repeating on the other three. That's why it's so nice to use nice time-saving steps like using contrast paint as a base coat, as any bit of time saved will really add up over the course of multiple models. Plus, any imperfections will be a lot less likely to be spotted when you view all these mechs as a whole rather than scrutinizing a single model. So no real need to be perfect here. After all, good enough is good enough. So, having finished the base coat, we're going to go ahead to the next step which will really spice up that plain tan color. 
Much like the previous step, I'm going to start with this contrast medium, only I'm going to switch to XV88 to get a nice secondary color to put some accents on that base color. And once we got that mixed up, we're going to apply it to the mix in a random tiger stripe pattern. We want to really avoid any uniformity in the pattern here and try to apply these as randomly as possible, as the intent here is to be reminiscent of a camouflage pattern. Now that that's applied, we're going to go ahead and boost up the shadows in the crevices with this here Agrax Earthshade. Normally I like to work with these ink washes at full strength, but for today's purposes that'll be a bit too strong. So for that I'm going to go ahead and put some ink on my wet palette, and then go ahead and add an equal portion of water to thin it out. Now that that ink is mixed up, we're going to go ahead and apply it extremely sparingly, choosing to focus this ink wash on only the portions where you'd have the darkest shadows namely under particularly steep undercuts or places where limbs join to the body. As you can see, the effect is pretty subtle, but it really does go a long way in punching up the shadows on these base coats. Next up, we're going to take this Ushtabi bone and a really frayed brush and apply some dry brush into the model. This will save a lot of time in the set of 4MX by applying a real quick edge highlight to the raised portions of the model. Next up, let's go ahead and apply a base layer to all of the metallics on the model. I find that this here gunmetal by the Army Painter War Paints has really nice coverage. In applying this metallic color to portions of mechs such as weapons, jump jets, vents, and joint ribbing, will create some visual interest that's real easy to read even at arm's length distance. This is also the first step on this painting process that's going to require us to be a little more precise. Once the base color is applied, we're going to go ahead and use this here Citadel Color Null Oil to apply some quick and dirty shading to these portions. Null oil over metallics provides a nice, grimy, dirty look that is absolutely fabulous and so quick and easy. It's another example of a technique that'll really let us save a lot of time in painting four models. And with the completion of that, these mechs are looking pretty good already. Now with this next step, we're going to add some contrasting color to the overall scheme. I'm going to take this Citadel Cantor Blue and this apple barrel turquoise and use some wet blending techniques to go ahead and mix them up on the glass of the cockpit canopies. Since the overall tone of the original base coat is almost an orangey brown, the use of a blue tone will work as a complementary color providing some really strong visual interest to these models. Since we're doing some wet blending here, I'm going to go ahead and apply the Cantor blue in a really thick coat over the entirety of the canopy. And next I'm going to come back in with the turquoise in the area which would be a specular highlight and blend the two colors together on the model and achieve a real smooth transition which would be difficult to do with traditional layered paints. Finally I'm going to switch over to this Vallejo model color black and go ahead and detail up portions that need to be super dark. There's not a lot of spots that demand the black but it's a real important color for the overall scheme. This will include any portions of the model such as solid munition gun barrels and most importantly the antennas. This is most important on the antennas because the black color reduces the visual impact of the section and helps sell the illusion that it's in the proper 6mm scale by making this wire appear slightly smaller than it actually is. Now that we've finished putting all the basic details onto these models, it's time to go ahead and take a few steps to beautify them a little further. That's going to include things such as freehanding the army insignia on the left breast of each mech painting up the lens jeweling and doing the bases. To begin freehanding the army insignia, I'm going to start with a variety of paints as shown here. A mixture of apple barrel turquoise and citadel moot green will serve as a nice aqua color for the robes of the wraith. The gunmetal is included for an indication of the sword and fire dragon bright will serve as the orange for the body of the fox. All of these colors will be applied over a black silhouette that is vaguely in the shape of the symbol. As with any freehanded symbol project, I've got my reference material just nearby so I can easily glance at it without turning my head. In this case, it's just off camera on my laptop screen to my right. Sticking with the theme of good enough, the symbol here doesn't have to be perfect. These models will be viewed at arm's length at most times anyways, so a vague representation of the symbol is more than sufficient. As you can see, the symbol here is more or less just a vague representation of the shapes but it'll read clearly on the tabletop as the colors of the insignia. This will not only make these mechs canonically appropriate, but they'll read as a cohesive unit when put together on the tabletop. From here I'm going to return to the Citadel Moot Green and add the green details to the models. On the bodies of the models themselves, the only spot that demands the green is this here small laser on the center torso of the cicada. But, as for the rest of them, 
All these bases have sections of texture that read as grass, and the moot green will serve as an excellent base coat for these sections as will tamp down the super bright color in a later step. Once again, as this is a base coat, precision isn't super important here, but what is important is achieving a solid coat that is both opaque and fully covered. For that, I recommend putting the paint on at full strength without any thinning. And similar to the last step, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the Citadel Mephiston Red, using this color in almost an identical fashion to firstly detail out the red of the medium lasers on all the mechs, of which three out of the four have, and then applying this color as a base coat to the rocky soil on all the bases of the mechs. As I'm trying to evoke some kind of iron-rich soil such as the Australian Outback or the soil of Mars, this red will serve as the perfect base coat for these colors. It won't be the final color, but it'll serve as a really rich undercoat to achieve that ruddy tone that I so desire. That being said, there is a portion on these models where it will be the final tone, and that's in the tertiary color on these mechs. As far as this squadron's markings go, they're all going to receive a stripe running down the center of their chassis and then one horizontally on each of their shoulders. This section does require a good deal of precision, so select your best brush for the job and take your time doing it. Although we're painting four mechs, it's only three stripes per model and won't take that long at all to get it done. I doubly reinforce to take your time here because any mistakes will be really hard to correct at this point. But for that, it doesn't have to be perfect, as you can see with the small imperfections on my mechs here. With the details on the mechs done, we're going to go ahead and finish up the colors on the base. For that, I've opted to choose this Citadel Fire Dragon Bright to lay down the next color on the red bases. I'm applying this color as a very thick overbrush instead of a dry brush, choosing to stipple and swipe it on in a very inconsistent coat. This inconsistent coverage will provide some irregularities for the soil that look a lot more natural in the end. Although it looks super bright right now, we're going to tamp it down in the following step. As a reminder, even though this step is sloppy, it's good to be pretty precise in your brush placement and not get any on the mix. Now to tamp that down, we're going to switch back over to Citadel Agrax Earthshade. Unlike the previous use of this color, we're going to go ahead and apply it full strength right out of the bottle as we want to bring down that super bright orange and unify the colors on the bases. Just like the last step, despite this being a sloppy, heavy-handed coat, it does require a bit of precision. We want to get this ink wash over the soil and not on the mix. And once you've got the hang of it, go ahead and rinse and repeat for all four chassis. Before you know it, all four will be inked up and that unnatural orange color will be tamped down into a much more natural tone thanks to the brown color of this ink wash. But that being said, we're not quite done with the ink washing on these bases. Next, we're going to switch over to the Citadel Colored Warp Lightning Contrast Paint and apply it full strength just like a wash. Of course, since it's a pre-bottled contrast tone, it's imperative to give it a thorough shake before using to ensure there's no pigment separation. Once thoroughly shook, go ahead and apply it full strength to that moot green we applied before. The texture will pick up the shading really well and it'll tamp down that unnaturally neon color. As we wait on the ink and the contrast paint to dry, we can go ahead and switch over to white and add specular highlights to any portions which are intended to be reflective. This not only includes all of the canopy glass across all the mechs, but also a tiny dot on all of the energy weapon emitters, a feature that's common among all of the chassis here. Despite this step needing precision, since I've chosen to use the Liquitex white ink, if I make any mistake, it's real easy to clean it up. Now that all the specular highlights are done on the reflective portions of these mechs, I'd like to include a detail which is common amongst all my chassis. That detail being a simple white band near the tip of all my antennas. It's a simple detail, but I find that the contrast provided by this white band adds an unparalleled amount of visual interest to the antennas. Now, with all those details done, it's time to go back to this Vallejo model color black and paint up the rims of the bases. Again, this step requires a bit of precision to avoid messing up the base colors. Finally, these mechs are ready for a coat of matte varnish. Now that these models have received a protective coat using this Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, we're going to go ahead and use a few very specific products to put the final touches on these bases. First up on that product list is going to be Mod Podge Gloss. 
Although there's plenty of brush-on gloss varnishes out there, Mod Podge gloss is more or less unparalleled because of both its luster and its price point. At least here in the US, I picked this up at the Dollar Tree for a dollar a bottle. This value is amplified when considering just how far a two ounce bottle will go over the use of miniatures. I personally only use this product here to apply a shine to canopies and lasers on my Battletech models. We'll go ahead and apply this real thick to the portions where we want it, and there's no fear of inconsistent drying. It'll all cure nice and shiny and clear. This inclusion will add some further visual interest by creating a variation in finishes on materials on this mech. Continuing the idea of a variation of material finish, we're going to go ahead and add some pigment powder to this model. In my case, I like to use a few different inexpensive materials to create my own pigment powder rather than buying overpriced hobby products. This here example is a Sanguine Conti Crayon, which I've shaved down with the tip of my X-Acto blade. This is a type of material which is easily accessible in an art store or readily found online. After shaving it down into a powder, we're going to use an old frayed brush to apply it to the base. This will create yet another material finish on the model and also serve to unify the colors on this base. Now for the final touch on this base, I'm going to apply some coarse flocking very sparingly using this extra thick super glue. Now, just a word of warning here. Super glue can create an effect called crazing on models, which is where the fumes can leave a white residue around the area of application. To avoid that, first we're going to pour the glue out on a surface to work from rather than directly onto the model. Now, once we've broken the flocking down into minuscule pieces, we're going to select the ones we want, dip it in the super glue with the tweezers, and apply it to the grassy portions on this base. Applied sparingly but strategically, these little tufts of grass can create further visual interest and hide imperfections in the finish on the base. It's just another example of a small subtle addition which adds great visual interest to a model. Something you may not necessarily notice, but you'd definitely miss if it wasn't there. And with these last touches, these models are done. I did paint some pilot name banners on the bases, but that's no different than any other freehand in on the model and not worthy of spending extra time on the video. Still, in Battletech it's really good to mark the front of your base and definitely a detail that you should include, even if it's just a plain color and not a fancy banner like this. That being said, these models are still a little rough around the edges, but they look great, especially compared to the potato quality that they started from. They're more than playable now and easily recognizable as Free Republic revolutionaries. And with that, this here medium lance is all done and dusted and ready to hit the field and be showcased for my friends this month at our Battletech event. It's a real good feeling to finish these models up, and it wouldn't be possible if I didn't accept a slightly lower quality than my best and call it good enough. It's real easy to compare our skills to other people, and I've always heard that comparison is the destroyer of joy. So, by accepting a slightly lower quality, we can get these models done. And just like one of my best friends says, having painted models sure beats the gray ones on the field. In any case, I've been Cameron on behalf of Country Fried Minis. I want to thank y'all for joining me today and learning a little bit and watching me finish this set. And in the end, I want you to always remember to stay happy while you're painting. Take it easy, fellers.